So we're ready for the final stage, um, assembling the timer, which is to add the wires. Um, so these will be added, as we said, to the negative terminal going towards the battery. So that's this, this black wire to the negative terminal. And then on the other side, the short motor wire um, attaches to the back plate. So we can go back to our little channel jig, which is quite useful to hold uh, in this position. And it's probably worth just putting a bit of tape on the legs to hold it in position. And then it gives us a nice secure base to work with. The um, motor wire, you will notice as well that I've just pulled the insulation, that black insulation down so that it doesn't melt as we attach the wire. Um, the slightly trickier one is, is this uh, motor, that is the battery wire. I find it's quite convenient if you just, um, when it's already tinned, just bend a little L into that tinned section of the, co of the wire and then you can see the shape of it there will fit nicely into that part of the timer. So we'll do this one first, making sure it's all tinned. There's probably enough there, enough solder there to, to go direct onto that without adding any more. It's just a matter of heating up what's there. And you've got to hold everything still until it just sets. There we go, nice and secure. The um, short wire to the motor goes on this back plate, which we've already pre-tinned. Um, this can be a little bit of a tricky one to get right because the, the wire doesn't always sit flat against the back plate. So we've got a couple of options. One, we can um, hold this wire in a peg. In fact, it's probably wise to do that because it gets a bit hot being a short, short wire. And then we can actually press the um, black wire down onto the back plate with a knife. Doing this just makes a nice joint and it gives us something to make sure it's secure while it goes off. So we're holding that down with a scalpel blade and we just heat everything. You see it will merge into one. The uh, scalpel does take some of the heat away so it takes a little bit longer. And then just holding it until it's set. There you can see it's flashed off. And there we have it, the completed timer with wires attached. We can remove it from the jig. You can see that the wires are nice and secure. Push that insulation back up to where it was. And we're then ready to attach our timer to our model. Before we do that, it's probably wise to test the timer with a 9 volt battery. And to do that, we can use the little jig that we began with. Um, I prefer to use the actual circuit that we're going to use the timer for to test because FETs, um, sometimes it depends on the voltage and current draw as to how they operate. So I prefer to use the exact same circuit as will fly in the model. So we have our completed timer and we've attached it to the motor and prop. Um, you'll notice again that these are reversed so this gives us the rotation that we want in the motor but the red line on this side is still the negative, the timer is always in the negative line to the battery. But because we're using a counterclockwise prop and the trim settings for the model favour a counterclockwise prop, we reverse these black and white, uh, black and red wires. We can attach it to our two cell battery and we'll do a short test by charging the timer with our 9 volt PP3. So this one works um, and I've just timed it at about eight seconds so it finishes at about eight and a half seconds with that slow decay 
um, that's uh, acceptable really for the club competition because uh, you can't get a very precise time. Uh, all of the timers we test are usually finished between 8.2 and 8.7 seconds. And that's partly because of the components that we use. So just a, if you wanted to do a different version of the same timer, uh, the 47 UF capacitor could be replaced with a smaller 33 UF and the 120 K resistor increased to 180 K and that would give you a similar sort of a time with some smaller components. But there's uh, plenty of um, adjustments you can make to those two capacitor and uh, resistor to change the time. So there we have it, the completed Peterborough timer, it's time to put it in a model.